Hello everyone, it's Benny here, and in this video what we're going to be doing is we're going to be talking about variables and mathematics. And don't worry, we're not going into any big fancy math, just basic arithmetic, addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. And that's it. No algebra, no trigonometry, no calculus, nothing like that. Very basic math. So, let's start with the variable. Now, this starts with what a computer is. And a computer, more or less, is an information processor. So, if you think about that for a moment, it makes sense that at some point or another, you're going to need some way of keeping track of and organizing that information. You'll need some way of determining what information is representative of this thing, and what information is representing this thing, and some way of being able to go back to different pieces of information at different times, and Java has a really simple solution to that, and that's something called a variable. Now, a variable is more or less the exact same thing as a variable in mathematics. It's a little bit different, but for our purposes here, it's the same thing. And that's Java's way of keeping track of information. Now, there's three steps to creating a variable, and I'll just create it right here above the output line for James Woods and Hello World. So, how do we create a variable? First, we'll need to tell Java what type of variable we're creating, because we, we're dealing with a computer, not a calculator here. A computer can handle way more types of information than just basic numbers. It can hold, I don't know, it can hold words, it can hold, it, it, well, it can't hold numbers, it can hold almost anything you want. You can even invent your own types of variables and make it hold a big, complicated representation of a giant robot ninja with, I don't know, <laughs> just, I don't know, I'm just imagining here, but you could. So, Java gives you a lot of options of types of variables you can create. So, oh, we're gonna keep simple for now, we're just gonna deal with numbers. And, e believe it or not, there's even different types of numbers you can have. But, for our purposes, we'll go for the simplest type, and that's the integer. And an integer is more or less just, in fact, it is a number that's either positive or negative, or zero. And it does not have a decimal place, and that's very important. If you try to give an integer with a decimal place, Java will be very unhappy. So make sure your integers do not have decimal places, because integers don't have decimal places. That's the definition of an integer. So to create this, I'll just type int. That's short for integer. It's just a little bit faster to type. That's why it's int and not integer. So there we go. We've created an integer. Now, step two. We need a name for it. And this can be almost anything we want. The only two big reservations that we have here is it can't start with a number, and it cannot have as a um, space in it. But other than that, it can be anything we want. Although, you, you can call it anything you want, but I'm going to keep it simple here and just call my variable A. And now, step three. And step three is an optional step. If you wanted to, you could just type semicolon here and just keep going, and Java will be perfectly happy with that. But, there is a step three that you can optionally have, and I suggest you do, in at least this case. And that is giving some value to the variable. This is called initializing the variable. So, the way we do this is we say it is equal, the equal sign, A equals something. And if you think about that in a mathematical way, then that makes sense. You say A equals 7, just like X equals 32 or whatever. But I'm going to say A equals 5, just because it's, it's 5, it's a number. And now, there we go, we've created our first variable. So I'm going to create a couple more variables. I'm going to create another integer called b, that's set equal to 7. And create another integer called c. And it's going to say c equals something a little bit different. Now, I said we we're going to talk about math in this video, and this is where we're going to do it. So, Java has very simple support for the, um, I shouldn't say simple support, but it has a very simple way of doing basic math. You just type plus, or minus, times or divide by. And these are the four mathematical operators in Java. 
and they work more or less like you expect. I could do 5 plus 13, and then Java would give me 25, because 12 plus 13 is 25. I could do 5 plus 7, and that would give me 12. Or, since we have variables here, I can do a plus b. That will also give me 12, because us, Java is recognizing that we're talking about variable a and variable b when we type a and b. So, Java's smart enough to put it together and say, oh, he wants us to do a plus b, which is 5 plus 7. And then, so that's what c equals. So there we go, that's the basics of math. Now we're going to talk about something called string concatenation, which is really big and fancy sounding, but it's actually very, very simple. So first off, what on earth is a string? A string is sort of shorthand for a string of characters. And it's not necessarily words because you can have things like exclamation points in a string. And when you put something in quotations like this, that's a string. So, there, nothing fancy. Now concatenation. That means taking strings and putting them together to make bigger strings. So, not all that complicated in the end, but just takes a little bit to put it together. So before we do that, I'm just going to print out C. And this by itself is valid. And note, it does not have quotations here. And this is the way Java determines if we're talking about a string or some term we've invented that we want Java to print out, or if we're talking about a variable. And that's why we had to have things in quotations in the last video. But this time we have a variable called C, we want to print out the variable, not the letter C, so we're just putting in C. If we click Run, you notice 12, so our math is being done correctly. So now let's make this a little bit more interesting using string concatenation. The way you concatenate strings is with the plus sign. You might be thinking, wait, I thought plus did addition. And you're right, if I wanted to do A plus C here, for example, then Java is doing addition. There you go, 12 plus um, 5 is 17. So the way Java knows that we're doing string concatenation and not addition is if we have something in quotes that we're adding to it. So if I just do something like C equals, and then do plus C, then Java knows that I'm doing string concatenation and I'm not trying to do some sort of very weird math that involves letters. Although I must admit, it would be pretty interesting if Java did try and do actual math with this. I, but, but fortunately, Java's smart enough to know that Oh, hey, he just wants to add the number C as part of the string. So there we go, we've done string concatenation. And now let's make this message a little bit more interesting. So I'm going to do A plus, and in here, I need to explicitly add spaces because Java does not add spaces. So A plus, I'm going to add plus sign, and then I'm going to add equals sign. And there we go, now it's displaying it like a mathematical equation, because it should display whatever a is equal to, which is 5, then a space, a plus sign, a space, then it should display, I forgot, b, then it should display b, which is 7, and a space, and equals, and a space, and it should display c. So display it like a mathematical equation. And it does, 5 plus 7 equals 12. So there we go. You've <coughs> Congratulations, you successfully created the second least interesting program you'll probably ever create. But that's okay, because in the next video we'll start doing some a little bit more interesting things. We'll talk about how we can do conditional branching, and it sounds fancy, but it's actually also pretty simple. You'll notice that's a bit of a recurring theme in Java. Things sound really, really fancy, but they're actually pretty simple. So, thank you. I hope you enjoyed, I hope you learned a little bit about this, and actually, before I go, and actually, how much do I want to talk? Okay. Before I go, I would like to show off just the other operators, like time, so a times b equals 35, a minus b, so 5 minus 7 equals negative 2. And now the interesting one, a divided by b. a divided by b equals zero. And if you know anything about math at all, alarm bells should be going off because 5 divided by 7 most certainly does not equal zero. But this actually has to do with us declaring our variables as integers. 
What an integer is, by definition, is the variable without decimal places that's either or zero. So by definition, an integer cannot have any decimal places. When we do a divided by b, that is doing 5 divided by 7. 5 divided by 7 gives you a number with decimal places. And well, we're doing math with integers though. And integers can't use decimal places, so what Java does is it makes its best guess. And it can't do, um, it can't have, do rounding, so it's just doing whatever it is, and it's basically just chopping off whatever the decimal place is. It's so 5 divided by 7, 0 point something or other. Jeff says, yeah, I can't handle decimal places, just ignore that, it's 0. So, that's how we end up with 0. So, if you want to do math that involves division, you will more likely than not want a variable type that has decimal places. So, just that's something important to note before we go. So now with that out of the way, thank you, and I will see you in the next video.